As I, I, I promised you to share with you the parable. I found it very beautiful actually. Sheikh Muhammad Qasim Nanudhi uh, is uh, recorded by Sheikh uh, Shabir Ahmad Uthmani in Tafsir Uthmani, it's in Urdu. His commentary on Surah Al-Falaq, he comments the notes he took himself from the Sheikh. And he says, he gives a parable explaining Surah Al-Falaq and the different kinds of harms it protects us from. He says it's like Allah wants us to think of ourselves like the plant that a gardener takes care of. A gardener is, is planting a plant in the ground and it has different problems that it has to protect itself from. Number one, there are animals like you know a goat or a lamb or something that wants to graze on that plant, it wants to chew on it. Now the, the goat or whatever animal it may be, or even a bug uh, or a bird, it does, it's not the enemy of the farmer. It's only doing that because that's in its nature. Allah created it and part of that creation is it's going to eat a plant or it's going to chew on it. This is part of the manifestation of bin sharri ma khalaq. There are things Allah created and they can cause you damage, not because they're evil, but because that's what they do. You know, a, a shark or a lion or whatever is going to do what it does. And it's not because it's evil, it's just it's acting out in accordance with its nature. So in the way Allah created things naturally, there's the potential for you receiving harm just in the natural order of things. And so you have to ask Allah for protection from them. But that's not the only kind of protection He seeks. So he fences the plant around so the, you know, the goat doesn't come by and chews it up. But the next thing is he has to plant the plant in a place where it gets plenty of sun, it gets plenty of water, it's in a good environment. And it's, there are no obstructions, there are no things that keep it, no blockades from keeping it from the things that it needs. We ask Allah, وَمِن شَرِّ غَاسِقٍ إِذَا وَقَبْ And this غَسَق and waqab, the barrier of dark, keeping you from what you, will, what you would otherwise have access to in the light of day. is just like that farmer who wants that there are no blockades, there are no obstacles in his path. And the obstacle for the human being clearly becomes the dark of the night. Then he says the third element is that if, what if you have too much water or too much sun? You get overwhelmed. And the plant, he specifically gave the example of the plant getting buried under snow or getting flooded with water, being overwhelmed from an outside element. I mentioned to you before, when people, their sorcery is done on them, they feel like they're being you know, uh, uh, suffocated from within. They feel like they are being pressured, or there's this heavy burden inside of them. That's the feeling of someone who's been, who's, who magic has been done on. And finally, he protects his garden and his plant from an enemy who wants to harm him. It's not just the elements, it's not just he wants to make sure he gets enough sunlight or whatever, not just the animals, but there's an actual enemy that wants to make sure his plant is destroyed. How does the surah address this enemy? وَمِن شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حَسَدٍ So from every angle, just like that plant the gardener wants to protect, Allah Azza wa wants to protect ourselves. And he wants us to seek protection for ourselves. So this surah is about protecting yourself from physical kinds of harm that may afflict you. The next surah will be about spiritual harms that can afflict you. So there's the body being protected in Surah Al-Falaq, and the, the ruh and the nafs being protected in Surah Al-Nas from waswasa of shaitan and evil company and things like that. The final comment on this I want to share with you about the hasidun, the people who have hasid against us. Who is on our side? What do you have to worry about? People, Muslims, getting all power. Man, they have this many weapons, and they have these many agents, and they've got this, and they've got the other, and all this conspiracy theory. Who do you have on your side? قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ All the darkness on one side, and the one who tears through the darkness, and brings light to you on the other side. What do you have to worry about? We have to hold on to this book and seriously believe in it. When it gives us counsel, we have to take it as counsel for us. We can't just take it as empty, you know, just a dars and some, some interesting knowledge, but go back to our attitude. This is supposed to change our attitudes. It's supposed to change our attitudes. I pray that Allah Azza wa gives all of us the strength to change our attitudes. May Allah make us unified with the Quran. May Allah give us a, a, a comprehensive understanding of it. I just want to make two announcements. Before.